In Stata, everything else is in one matrix, which as a result, if you want to calculate things, it's very easily to do so in a loop because everything is a memory already. Therefore, loops are very useful to do in Stata. And I'll go through three types of loops with you today. The first one is how to loop over variable names or strings. The second one is how to loop over numbers. And the third one is how to loop over all observations in a variable. So let's dive right into it. We open back up again our auto file. And if we want to make a loop, we would use a syntax in the following way. For each variable in, say, a couple of variables, a far list, open brackets, generate new variable equals new variable new so what this command does first of all you start up the loop for a string or a variable which you do with the for each command then you specify a local variable that you'd like to use later on. In this case, for each bar, which I'd like to use if I'm looping over variables, because it's very intuitive for me to understand that this is a variable I'm looping over. Then you use the in command to, let's say, to recognize you're importing a variable list. And then you can put any number of variables here. You open up the curly brackets and press enter. Now, anything between this first curly bracket and the next curly bracket is seen as part of the loop. So it doesn't need to be one line as is here. You can also have 20 different lines there or 100. It doesn't matter. As long as you close up the loop at the end. Otherwise, data gives you an error. So at the second line, I say generate a new variable which I denote with the dot bar dot thing. If I would change this into name, I would here have the two dots and name in the middle. And you can use this as many times as you'd like, but only within the loop. Outside of the loop, the variable doesn't exist anymore because it makes a local and it destroys that one later on. So I generate a new variable that is equal to the previous variable divided, divided by 100. And then I use the curly brackets to close up the loop. So if we now give us the summary statistics of these variables, you'll find that they are a hundred times lower than before. So that seems to work. Now, what you'd like to do, in addition to looping over variables, you can also loop over strings. You would basically do something like this and then have some specific string there, whatever you like. This can be useful in instances where you have a variable that looks something like this. So trunk, weight, or length, and you want to loop over all of these variables, but not over all of these other ones. So then you could loop over the string underscore new and calculate the command for all of them. It's an easy way how to do that. Now you'd like to loop over a number. What you would do is for values, which let's say I recognize that you're looping over a number, value equals one to 10. This syntax is slightly different than before. So use for values as opposed to for each then I just call it a value because it's not a variable, but you can also still call it a variable if you'd like. And then you need to use the equal sign and then something that looks like a fraction, which means starting at one, going from one to two to three to four to five to six to seven to eight to nine and ending at 10. And again, the, the bracket commands. So now I can generate a, say, this variable the length variable underscore value is equal to the same length variable divided by the value 
So you can use it both in appending part of a name and as a value, an integer itself. And then you close up the brackets. And now you see that we have 10 new variables, which are all divided by the old number. So let me also just add in the normal length here. And you see that here they're the same because they're divided by one, then by two, by three, by four, by five, etc. And now the last and most complicated type of loop. You can loop over all parts of a variable. And this is very useful at times. So what I do here is I tell myself, look levels off the variable foreign and make me a local that is called levels. Then I will loop over the variable, that's the new name I give it, of the local of levels. And then I have a command that I'd like to use, say summarize the trunk sites. And I subsequently use it, use this variable thing into my loop. So let's go one step back. Levels off gives you all the levels or types of observations in a variable, in this case, foreign. Then I save that thing as a local under the name levels. Then I start a loop that uses the variable thing as before to be used here over the local, which is what we just made, that is called levels that we just named here. And then I do whatever I like, not using the local or levels, but using the var as a local. So it basically splits that thing apart and then uses it for each observation in there. So now we have the summary statistics for domestic and foreign cars, for which foreign cars have substantially smaller trucks. Thank you so much for listening to this tutorial. I hope it was insightful and that you learned how to use loops. Now, by myself, I always use loops for everything. If I need to repeat a command more than once, I already start using a loop. If I need to generate two variables in a similar way, I make a loop. If I need to adjust two variables in something or more, I make a loop. The reason why I loop everything that I possibly can is because if you want to change your code, all you need to do is simply add parts of a variable to the piece of code. So if you just want to have more than one variable to do this with, or more than one variable here. All that you'd have to do is use the previous piece of code and you just click in a couple of new variables. And then you can repeat everything else that you just did before. So it's very efficient to use these operations. You can very efficiently adjust your code by having loops because it's very transparent what they do and you don't need to copy paste stuff all the time, which is something you should prevent at all costs. Thank you so much for listening and until the next YouTube tutorial.